Okay, guys, welcome back to the channel. Got a quick video. Well, may not be quick, but actually could be one of my most valuable videos for many of you in terms of saving money if you're interested in the Bach. Because March 3rd is coming up, rapidly approaching, and that's the deadline for getting in on certain discounts on optimal room correction. I previewed it a little bit before the Florida show, but I wanted to show you a little bit more now that I've had more time with it in beta. Some of my members have had it. Everybody with Bach from Mac that bought from me has already got it and been testing it. So I wanted to give you a little more insight because this is revolutionary. This is as revolutionary as the crosstalk cancellation is in terms of time domain corrections. Now Edgar has taken on frequency domain corrections in the same vein of doing something nobody else has ever done. So I want to give you a little more feedback now that I have time with it and also alert you if you do order Audio Dio or Bach for Mac before March 3rd, you qualify for significant discounts on the ORC versus after the fact, I think it's going to be $3,000 add on. Uh, for the DO and audio and probably 2000 for the Bach for Mac. So significant savings if you act soon uh, and get in early. So be sure to email me if you're interested. We've got limited time left, but if you want to get a call in, send me an email. It's always in the description. But really what I wanted to do in this video is show you and also some of my members have been begging me to give a little more insight because I'm one of the few people that have gone through a full tutorial with Edgar on it. So I want to give for those people as well as insights for any of you considering what is so revolutionary about this ORC compared to all the other ones I've used before from Dirac, Audio, Audio Lens, all these other ones. And Fernando, who you've seen in my videos, who's had even more experience with different DSP, is blown away by this ORC. So we'll have feedback and testimonials and all that coming. But to give you guys a little bit of insight of what it does, I want to show you some screens. Now, first of all, this video, when I get into the detailed screens, could be overwhelming to you. Could be like, oh my God, this is so complex. You know, the Bach is really for almost anybody of any skill set. As long as you know how to plug in a USB <laughs> cables and plug in power cords and don't get intimidated by computer audio, everything else, this should definitely be for you because you can tailor this to your exact taste. No more having to do, look, you can still roll tubes, you can buy fuses, you can buy cables to tweak and tune your system but you're going to laugh at yourself doing that the primitive way all these years versus what you have the capabilities now without even changing one piece of gear but let's get into it real quick for people that don't like to get into the weeds this is how easy it is much simpler than direct simply you're going to press arm put the mics in your ear hit you, whether you want head tracking or not, remember, it's going to come with a camera. You can't see it off camera. And track your head. If you want to, you can turn that off. That's where you got the choice. And then hit fire. It's going to shoot a frequency sweep to your the microphones in your ear. And theoretically, you can be done right then and there. Everything else is taken care of for you. Or if you want to do a second sweep, it will actually show you measurements after the fact. What, how close did it really get? What are your measurements now after the DSP corrections, which is very powerful, something direct doesn't do. They show you what the target is, what they assume you're going to get. They never take the measurements after the fact. And certainly they don't take it in your ears, which is part of the secret sauce here. So you can do two sweeps and you're done for people that just don't want to get into the weeds. For people that want to get into the weeds, understand a little bit more why it's revolutionary. Let me talk about that real quick. On this screen is the familiar Bach screen for crosstalk cancellation. Your crosstalk values, your impulse response, frequency response, and how much it's correcting for each channel for time domain based crosstalk cancellation. Which, if you're going to do time domain correction in DSP, Edgar is a big believer in, yes, you might compress the uh, impulse response as, as a side effect of the crosstalk cancellation, but Crosstalk cancellation is the primary goal for time domain DSP, and that's what the Bach already did. But what you're going to do now, what he's got now, is a screen that shows you ORC. And let me go ahead and bring that screen up here. This is going to be your new screen for all your frequency domain issues. And what I'm showing you here is... My room measured without any correction at all, Dirac or anything. 
And I want to break that down for you because I intentionally made some things really bad just to see how much the DSP could correct. And one of the things that I want to get out the way first, the secret sauce of what Edgar's doing and no other frequency response DSP is doing, is it's breaking the, the frequency response into three different parts. You have a quasi free field response, and you can kind of tell by the coloring, uh, mid-range and bass. Those things aren't impacted as much by your head, torso, and ear pinna. So those are going to be treated separately. And a lot of people have noticed over the years, they only want to use DSP on the bass and they don't like it on the highs. Well, he's figured out why <laughs> that's the case with some of these other DSP programs that do a little bit too much correction in the highs and other things that are not correct for head, torso, and ear pinna effect. The second partition that he creates is a low order pinna effect that is the part of the frequency response that has to do with your head and your torso in impacting frequency response. Remember, you're taking these measurements in your ear. This is not just a mic sitting there with no body there and, imp and showing the impact of that. Brilliant. Um, and that's part of the high cost is just those mics that go in your ear, FYI. V those are, you know, state-of-the-art engineering to create mics 20 to 40,000 hertz that uh, work in your ears. But getting back to the three parts, Low order pinna and then high order pinna. And high order pinna has more to do with the shape of your ears. And we're each going to have different measurements. So your room is impacting this part. Your torso and head and your ear pinna are impacting this part. That's why this looks really weird on top of me jimmy rigging it to make it look uh, worse because I wanted to see what the DSP could correct. So if you look real quick, I intentionally set my sub volume really high. Wrong. You know, in theory, I could just set the volume lower and bring it lower. But here's a quick subwoofer tip. If you've got DSP, this is exactly what you want to do. Because guess what? If you lower the volume of your sub, well, what's, is it going to be that peak right there that's going to be at the center baseline? Then all the other curve is not going to be flat either. DSP will bring it down at the particular notches down to flat and you're going to see that in a second but I made that intentionally big to show how much the DSP is going to help then certain things in your room left right can impact things and then you get to your head torso and your ears so even though this looks very raggedy remember <laughs> these are measurements in your ear not a free-flowing mic like uh, free field mic like direct or or REW and all that stuff. So get used to that part. And this part is definitely going to be different from what you're used to seeing. In any case, once you run your measurements, you're going to get, like you've seen in Dirac and all these other programs, a target curve. It's going to say, if things were optimally done in your room, this would what should be the response. This is what they are judging would be optimal for your ears in this room. And again, you see mostly flat in the free field area, but then not overcorrecting like some DSPs do for your ear pinna, just doing selective psychoacoustic related stuff to make your speakers disappear more, especially in the high order pinna is where sometimes that corrupts where we can localize. Sometimes you also get too much sibilance, you get too much um, exaggeration with DSP trying to be flat. This is where you also can play with this according to taste. So I don't want to get too much in the weeds, but let me just show you some of the features. It's amazing how customizable it is. You're done. Oh, also, after you take this, you can then show what's measured. So here you have what was measured in my room, in my ears. This is what I'm getting. Red and black are left and right channel. I guarantee you very few people on the planet, only the people that have this software, are getting in their ears at their listening position this flat all the way up to the point of 1000 hertz where we are intentionally leaving some anomalies for our ear because remember, these mics are in your ear. They're not free field. If we want to take free field mic measurements and show that it could be flat, you can do that if you want. But this is amazing how it went from this uncorrected in my room, targeted this, and then it measured 
after this is what I'm getting guys nobody on the planet is getting this okay <laughs> this is amazing but does that guarantee you're gonna like it in most cases yes you're gonna be done <laughs> you won't have to do anything that's what most people are doing right now in beta because they haven't gotten all into the weeds but it's incredible the amount of customization and tweaking you can do uh, I'm going to let Edgar get into spectral entropy on the quasi free field, low order pinna, high order pinna, and all these different settings here that you can adjust if you like the correction. Harshness could be, a, you know, an issue with doing overcorrection for some people's rooms. He's thought of all of that. Bigger rooms versus smaller rooms. Sometimes high frequencies can be absent in large rooms. There's different parameters that can suit just about any person's room or taste. You also have maximum allowable boost and gain. One of the big problems you have in DSP is boosting. I've always been a big proponent if you're a long time subscriber. Don't add gain in direct, just bring everything down. Well, you don't have to jimmy rig things now to bring the curve down and do all that stuff, tips I had given you before. He's already taken care of that, and he brings the loudness down of everything to equal whatever boost is needed. Um, he's thought of everything, guys. <laughs> I don't want to get into the weeds too much. Optimization modes we're going to get into, but also the Freefield um, target curves are ways to taste different flavors. We all have different tastes depending on the music we listen to and what we're used to. Some people like BBC speakers, some people listen to jazz, classical, studio recordings, and different people over the years, recording engineers of very high ilk, have come up with their own target curves that they find or think that are optimal. And we have those flavors of available here that Edgar already programmed in. You have Sean Olive, the Harmon curve, uh, an EBU one, uh, Theoretical Applied Physics has their own, Bob Katz has one, David Chesky, and then Pure Flat, if you like that. And so also depending on your ear hearing, how much hearing loss you've had over the years or how young you are, you may be more or less sensitive to what your ear pinna is getting in the ear. Again, this is just taking what's going in your ear. If your eardrum has ear loss, uh, hearing loss and all those kind of other things that's where some of these curves can he's thought of everything taking care of that for you also the level of customization is crazy some people still say oh i only want to use tsp on the bass i don't want to use it in highs well you have high frequency cutoffs low frequency cutoffs you can customize this so easy to whatever you believe in, whatever dogmas you want to try, you can try them. You'll end up probably coming back to all the defaults. And what's great is you never have to worry about what the defaults were. You just press this button, you're always back to defaults, and he always has them in green and what you've highlighted and what it's measured at. It looks complicated. It's really not. Um, once you get the hang of it and you spend that first session, everybody that gets ORC is going to get a one-on-one -on -one with Edgar. He still does all the customer support at this point, although it's getting a little bit crazy for him. He's looking to hire some people. Uh, but yeah, this is an amazing tool. Unbelievable the difference it makes. When you have this in your ear at your listening position, I can't... Uh, the bass is incredible. I mean, incredible. You can listen to any recording and you will hear the difference. I mean, I've listened to rap, uh, classical, it doesn't matter. In fact, some recordings that sometimes would destroy most systems and irritate a room and all that because of frequency anomalies or whatnot, no more. I mean, this is super powerful. And I would argue for most people, they may find ORC even more valuable than the 3D spatial cues of the Bach. Because, believe it or not, there are maybe 1% or 2% of people out there that like crosstalk. They just like the confined sound stage. That's what they're used to, and so be it. You're going to want this product just for the ORC, though. It makes that big of a difference that even if you turn off the Bach. And, oh, another thing. In both the Bach and with this, there is a slider uh, behind the screen here where you can tailor it. So, literally... Anything to your taste with DSP can now be controlled to what you want to try and see for yourself. It's no more a case of having to be, you know, fit in a shoebox of this product only believes in this. This is the curve. You can't really change it and you either have to accept it or not. 
this gives you so much control that's very easy to adjust and then listen to your taste. It's as easy as clicking these bins. You can save three different bins, click between them. Oh, and another thing he's got, you can't really see it here. I'll bring it up a little bit over. One of the problems with A being either the Bach or different DSPs is that you have level matching issues because one's going to be at different volumes than other if it's tailoring things. He's already done that for you. It will auto correct for the volume differences between different curves and bins. So you get a true A, B, compar apples to apple comparison. Uh, even if you bypass everything, it will give you a true apples to apples comparison. He wants you to hear the legitimate difference. He's not trying to hide it, not trying to just give you a target curve like Dirac does, estimates of what's going in your ear. No, this is what's going in your ear. You will be able to A, B it, compare it, and guys, <laughs> If you don't hear the difference, go straight to the audiologist, okay? Uh, so hopefully this is helpful. I'm going to have a lot more in the weeds for people that really like to get into the details. And if you own it, like many of my uh, subscribers and members do, I'm going to have a, a detailed Zoom with Edgar. You can join our WhatsApp group, the biggest user group of Bach uh, on the planet. Always giving great advice and sharing stories, and Edgar's actually in it as well. So feel free to join that. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you back here soon with a lot more.